All right, YouTube, so we are back, of course, to talk about some Final Fantasy VII Remake. What we have today is a very interesting theory that somebody left on one of my videos a good month or two back. It's been a little while, and I honestly don't remember who it was or what video it was, or I'd obviously give them a shout-out. But the theory is, did Aerith give us the holy materia within Remake? Now, I'm sure to most people that does sound crazy, and it is pretty out there, but there is evidence to support this, and there are things that go against it. Now, the scene that we are talking about is whenever we fall down to the Sector 5 church and talk to Aerith. Now, between the original FF7 and Remake, this scene plays out relatively the same. Cloud falls from Mocker Reactor 5. He has, like, an internal monologue with himself. Aerith wakes him up. They talk about the flowers, and Aerith mentions Materia, though the Materia thing is different between the games, and that's what's important here. And then she mentions that her Materia is useless. So where does the Holy Materia come into all of this? Well, within Remake, whenever we fall down to the Sector 5 church and Aerith wakes us up, we have the conversation. She hands us back a Materia that she claims we dropped. Before I forget, you dropped this when you landed. Thanks. Now first, that might seem like a nothing scene, right? She's just giving us back a Materia that we dropped when we crashed through the roof. Thing is, however, we don't get an on-screen indication of us receiving a materia, which is something that happens multiple times throughout the game. We see at least two times throughout the game that whenever somebody gives us a materia, we actually get an on-screen indication of us obtaining that materia. We see at least twice with Jesse. I don't recall if there's any other scenes throughout the game where somebody gives us a materia. Yeah, well, thanks. You do know how to use it, right? A down payment. Those are just the two that I can remember off the top of my head, but I did find it weird that, you know, Aerith hands us a piece of materia, but it doesn't say whatever materia obtained. Now, of course, there are things that go for and against this potentially being the holy materia, and we're going to look at it from both sides, as we always do. Now, the one thing that sticks out to me is that, unless I'm remembering incorrectly, it's entirely possible for you not to have any materia going into this, outside of maybe summon materia, I don't know if you can sell summon materia, but before you ever hop on the train to go to the Sector 5 reactor, you could, in theory, go to the nearest shop and just sell every piece of materia you have, thus, whenever you fall down to the Sector 5 church, she cannot hand you back a piece of materia because you didn't have any. Like, I know there's material you find along the way when you're going to the Sector 5 reactor. There's actually a green material on the subway train, and then there's material when you're messing with these sun lamps and things like that. And there might be some material that are also in, like, treasure chests and things. But those, of course, are entirely avoidable. You don't have to grab those material. You don't ever have to open up any chests that might also have material in them, break any boxes. Like, you never have to do any of that stuff. Unless you guys can point out a moment between us, like, getting on the train to go to Sector 5 and us actually getting to where we fall down to the air, if there's any time that we are forced to have a piece of material in our inventory, I cannot remember. It's been a little bit since I played that segment. That partially makes me wonder, and it'd be kind of cool to test, like if you sold all your green material in your inventory, and you're never given a piece like forcefully before you get to Aerith, if like it would change it to a different color of material that you do own, like a purple, blue, or yellow. But then if you did sell everything, would it make it into a red material, since that would be like the sum of the material, which again, I'm fairly certain you cannot sell. I've never even tried to sell any material in the game at all, so I have no idea. Because it does seem like a bit of an oversight from the developers, unless it's intentional, which is kind of the point of this video, that you could, in theory, have no material in your inventory, so how can you possibly lose one for this cutscene? Now, as for the on-screen indication thing, the, something that goes against this being, you know, the holy materia is that maybe we don't get that on-screen indication because we're being given a materia that we already own, where you go back to the Jesse giving us healing materia or the effort materia, those are brand new materia for us, right? We're obtaining them for the first time, whereas Aerith is just giving us back a materia, so maybe that's why we don't get anything on screen. Now, something that might stand out immensely to people in regards to whether or not this is or isn't the holy materia is the fact that it is clearly a green materia, whereas, you know, holy is meant to be a white materia. But, as some people may or may not remember when it comes to the original Final Fantasy VII, Bugenhagen tells us that if the prayer for holy reaches the planet, the white material will actually glow green. More specifically, in the scene, Bugenhagen says that it glows a pale green, but in the later cutscene where we see that Aerith was successful in praying for holy, it glows a pretty vibrant green. So hopping back to whether or not this is or isn't the holy material, the color wouldn't really matter if it's an already active holy material, as in Aerith has already prayed for it and that prayer was successful. And that's where Remake comes back into it. We know that Aerith is damn near omnipotent, just like Sephiroth. She seems to know, you know, about the past, present, future, whatever the case. So if she knows the events of the original FF7, she would already know that her material is actually not useless. It's actually one of the strongest material out there. And she might have been this entire time, you know, even before we met her, up until we meet her again in Sector 5, praying to activate that material. So given that Aerith seemingly has knowledge of the original Final Fantasy VII, she would know when and how she dies and what happens to her holy materia. So maybe she activated this materia and has given it to Cloud preemptively so it doesn't get lost later on, if she still plans on dying, that is. 
And that's the thing, when it comes to Remake, regardless of whether or not anything at all that we are discussing in this video is even remotely true, things are going to be different. Despite what the devs tell you in interviews, it's going to be, you know, the Final Fantasy VII story that you know. But they said that with the first Remake game, and as faithful as it was to the Midgar segment, it's still very different. And regardless of how faithful most of the game was, that final chapter is goddamn nothing at all like the original FF7. So you can't believe everything they say. So things are going to be different. They have to be different. With the knowledge that Aerith has... With the knowledge that Sephiroth has, with all the characters getting visions, like flash forwards, flashbacks, all these other different things, like shit just simply has to play out differently. I just personally think it'd be cool if this seemingly throwaway scene of Aerith giving us back our supposedly dropped materia turned out to be an already active holy materia that she made for us way in the past because she still, you know, planned on dying or thinks she's still gonna die. So later on in the remake story, whenever we need that holy materia, it's already active and ready to go. But of course, my dudes, this is just a theory. Despite how much we talked about this, how much evidence I've tried to show to support this theory, it doesn't necessarily mean it's true. We probably won't ever know until way later down the road and whatever the probably damn near final game will be for Remake. And at the end of the day, the more likely thing here is, of course, it's just a throwaway scene of her just handing us a piece of material back that we did drop whenever we fell. But it is kind of interesting that it doesn't give us any sort of on-screen indication. It could have just been any green random material in your inventory. Fire, ice, anything like that. They could have just thrown something out there on screen, but they didn't. But that was kind of interesting. But of course, my dudes, that's pretty much the video. So I'll pass it off to you guys. What are your thoughts on this particular theory? It is a bit out there, but there's several bits of evidence that do kind of support it. And I personally could see the remake character of Aerith giving us the holy material ahead of time because maybe she still plans to die. Maybe she thinks she's going to die. Maybe that's why she's trying to change destiny at the end of the game to prevent dying. But in case she does, we already have the holy material. Other than my dudes, that is the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We'll see you more Final Fantasy VII Remake content. Turn on my notifications. Follow me on Twitter at DashyDateYT. I'm a Discord. A link to my social networks are in the description. In the outro. All well, later, guys. Not like mine, no. It's special. Mine's not good for anything at all. Used to care what people thought. But now I care more. I mean, nobody out here's got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending. Depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that. Like Coltrane, we in here. Like Rogaine, or leave it. Like Cobain.